In this video, I will explain how the mask authenticated messaging payload is created and how it is parsed. If you have not watched IOTA tutorial 19, please watch that video first. In IOTA tutorial 19, I have already discussed the MEM object. This is a transaction bundle with transaction objects. This is the payload, but a better name is mask payload. This mask payload is divided in several parts. Each part consists of 2187 trites and is stored in the signature message fragment field. If needed, the last part is padded with nines to make its size 2187 trites. The mask payload contains the following information. The encoded index and the encoded message length. Encoded means the integer values are converted to trits. The message consisting of the next root and the message itself, the nonce, the signature, the encoded number of siblings, and the siblings. The message consists of the sensor data itself converted to trites and the next root, and this is an example of a sensor data. The mask payload is created in this file in the create function. In the next slides, I will explain the basics how the mask payload is created and also how it is parsed by using drawings as a visual aid to help you to understand the concept. If you go through the create function line by line, you might find this drawing helpful to understand the code. This is the mask payload format. These are the field sizes, and these are the values stored in the fields. The encoded index is stored in this field, the encoded message length is stored in this field, the message containing the next root and the actual message is stored in this field. The nonce is stored in this field. The signature is stored in this field. The encoded number of siblings is stored in this field. And the siblings is stored in this field. The index is stored in this fixed size field. The message length is stored in this fixed size field. The next root is stored in this fixed size field. The message is stored in this variable size field. The field size is stored in this field. The nonce is stored in this fixed field size. With the nonce value, you can retrieve the security level, which I will discuss later on. The signature is stored in this variable size field. The field size depends on the security level. The siblings count is stored in this fixed field size. The siblings is stored in this variable size field. The size depends on the siblings count, which you can find in this field. I will now explain how the mask payload is created. Please note, this is a simplified explanation. In the create function, the mask payload is created. The create function needs the seed, the message, the side key, the root, the siblings, the next root, the start value, the index value and the security level. The index value is converted to trits and stored in this field. The message length is calculated and converted to trits and stored in this field. This is a sponge construction. In the restricted mode, the side key is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. The root is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. The index and message length are absorbed and the transformation function is applied. The next root and message are absorbed and the transformation function is applied. This function generates the mask message consisting of the next root and the actual message. The nonce is calculated in this file in the search function. Nonce is a number based on the side key, root, index, message length, next root, and message. Let's call these values mask bundle values. Nons can be interpreted as a value created by scrambling these mask bundle values in a specific way using the security level. After the transformation function, the state memory is used as input to the search underscore CPU function. This is also a transformation function, and it also needs a security level as input. The result of this transformation function is the nonce. The nonce is the first 81 trits of the state memory. The nonce is stored in this field. To calculate the signature, 
we first need to calculate the subseed and key. In this file, the subseed and key is calculated. The subseed is calculated in the subseed function and the key is calculated in the key function. First, we need to add the seed and index number together to get the subseed. The subseed is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. This function generates the key space. The key space size is 243 threads. To calculate the key, the key space is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. This function generates the key. The key is the private key and the key size is the security level times the key length and the key length is 6561 threads. Previously we have calculated the nonce. Now the same nonce is absorbed in our response construction and the transformation function is applied. After the transformation function is applied, we take the first 243 threads of the state memory. This value is called the bundle. The bundle is also known as the bundle hash. The signature is calculated in this file in the signature function. To calculate the signature, the bundle is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. This function generates the signature. The signature size is the security level times 6561 threads. How the signature is created inside this transformation function will be explained in the next two slides. What is happening inside the transformation function is the following. We take the bundle which consists of 243 threads. That is the same as 3 times 27 trites. Here are 27 trites, here are 27 trites, and here are another 27 trites. Now convert each trite to its decimal value. And then we do this calculation, 13 minus the decimal value. So 13 minus minus 12 is 25, 13 minus minus 7 is 20, etc. These values are used to hash each segment to create the signature which will be explained in the next slide. This is our key. Each square is a segment and each segment consists of 81 trites, as seen over here. Each segment is hashed k times and this is the number we just calculated before. What we get is a signature and depending on the selected security level, this is our signature when we select security level one. This is our signature when we select security level 2 and this is our signature when we select security level 3. In IOTA tutorial 19 I have already explained what number of siblings and siblings are. This is just a short recap. If this is your leaf and this is your root then this is called your root branch. If you take the root branch as your reference then these blue nodes are the siblings. In this example, the number of siblings is four. One, two, three, four. We have calculated our signature. We have our number of siblings and our siblings. These three values are absorbed and the transformation function is applied. After the transformation function is applied, the mass signature is stored in this field. The mass number of siblings is stored in this field and the mass siblings is stored in this field. The complete mask payload is now created. When consuming a mem stream, the signature is first validated by verifying if the signature belongs to one of the three sleeves. If the signature verification fails, the entire message is deemed invalid. If the signature verification is valid, the message is unmasked. The mask payload is parsed in this file in the parse function. This is our mask payload. In the restricted mode, the side key is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. Next, the root is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. Next, the encoded index and the encoded message length are absorbed and the transformation function is applied. Next, the mask message is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. Next, the mass nonce is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. After the transformation function is applied, we take the first 233 threads of the state memory. This value is the bundle. Next, we need to extract the security level. The security level is extracted using the checksum underscore security function, which is located in this file. 
The checksum security function uses the bundle as input and outputs the security level. We extracted the security level from the bundle. Now we know where the signature begins and where it ends in our mask payload. The mask signature is extracted from the mask payload and absorbed and the transformation function is applied. This transformation function will generate the address. How the address is calculated will be explained in the next slides. This transformation function is this function. It is called the digest underscore bundle underscore signature, which can be found in this file. Let's again calculate the number of hashes. Again, we start with the bundle. The bundle consists of 243 threads. This is the bundle in trites, 3 times 27 trites. Here are 27 trites, here are 27 trites, and here are 27 trites. Convert each trite to its decimal value, as can be seen over here. Next, we do this calculation. 13 plus the decimal value, for example, 13 plus minus 12 is 1. 13 plus minus 7 is 6, etc. These values are needed to hash each segment to validate the signature. Here you can see our signature. If security level is 1, then this is our signature. If security level is 2, then this is our signature. And if security level is 3, then this is our signature. This square is a segment which consists of 81 trites and we need to hash each segment k times. That's the number we calculated in the previous slide. What we get is the key fragment. 27 segments forms a key fragment. Next, we hash each key fragment one time to get the digest. Each digest consists of 81 trites. If the security level is one, then this digest needs to be hashed once to get the address. If security level is two, we need these two digests together hash it once to get the address. If security level is three, we need to take these three digests and hash it once to get the address. The mass number of siblings and the siblings are absorbed and the transformation function is applied. This function outputs the unmasked siblings. Next, we need to calculate the root. Previously, we have calculated the address and we know the index. The index is important because we need to know where the address is located in our Merkle tree. Let's assume this is our index and this is our address. So our address is located here. If we hash this address, we get this leaf. We know our siblings, so we can calculate our root. The parse function This parse function requires the root. The root value you pass into the parse function must match this calculated root. If this is the case, the signature is valid and the next root and message can be unmasked. This is the final step. After the signature is validated and the signature belongs to one of the three leaves, the mask message is absorbed and the transformation function is applied. This function outputs the unmask next root and the unmask message. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.